know, the question about travel plans is a bit of a personal risk question, right? I mean, people are still allowed to travel to the vast majority of the world. It really comes down to, I think, two things. One, how willing are you to have your travel plans disrupted? And two, if you're traveling to a country and you get sick, how comfortable are you using the healthcare services in that country? So personally, I've made the decision not to travel outside of Canada for those reasons. If I'm traveling, I want to go on vacation and you know have a fun time. I don't want to be worrying about whether my flights are going to be canceled, my hotel is going to be put in lockdown, et cetera, et cetera. And I certainly don't want to worry about if I'm one of the unlucky people who gets really sick, I don't want to worry about having to go to a hospital in some foreign country. All provinces are able to test for this. Right now, the testing is still fairly limited because it's really based on, on travel. And this isn't a test that every single lab can do. So right now, there's a lot of work going on to ensure that the testing can be done more widely. And so it's going to be easier to do that when we get to the point where we're screening people who don't have a travel history. You know, it's a real uh, misconception that we can somehow close our borders. Uh, this has been shown over and over again in, 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 in studies that you can't, you can't close borders anymore. Uh, if we were 16th century Europe, you could do it, but you can't do it now. And we are so interconnected. If you think about the goods and services and food that we have in Canada, most of it's not from here. And so we are unable to close our borders that way. And really, this is about risk mitigation rather than trying to like stop the risk. And so that's why we're screening people with travel histories. But there's also very much an assumption that viruses cross borders. They don't need passports and they will very happily, this virus will very happily spread to every country in the world at some point. And so we need to think beyond that and really think about what are the strategies that we can use in Canada to try to slow this down, but we're not gonna stop it. Yeah, there definitely are, are projections. Uh, you know, right now, this virus, even if we take a, a big sort of overestimate, right now this virus is, has infected far less than 1% of the world's population, and it's generally believed that up to 75% of the world's population in some mathematical models could get infected with this. So we're not even at the end of the beginning yet. We're still at the beginning of the beginning here. Uh, this is something which is going to be going on for months. Um, and we will see the slow continued spread of this virus unless, you know, I would love to be proven wrong on that, but so far everything that we've seen over the last two months is pointing towards the slow spread of this virus to different countries around the world. Um, I actually don't know the answer to that. We, we do give, uh, we certainly do talk to people about their travel history. I don't know if Canada specifically is taking people's temperatures. I would argue that that's not going to be useful um, because people can take Advil and Tylenol and not have a temperature or you could not have a temperature today and tomorrow you could have a temperature. So to me, the far more useful thing in airport screening is that we remind people of the symptoms, we give them the contact information and, and things that they can get, uh, information they can get when they get home and if they are sick. Um, temperature screening has been shown in the literature not to be useful.